Baruch Hashem, the gate of remembrance. Good evening, everyone. Today we are blessed to start the 19th, 19th gate. You remember? Do you believe that? We already finished 18th of them. When Hashem gave us the strength and the ability to study much more. And more and more Torah. Baruch Hashem, the Torah protects all of us. The only thing that protects us is Torah. This is a shield. May Hashem bless the Medina's family for hosting the Shi'ur in their beautiful house. May Hashem uh, bless them so be able to buy this house, amen. Whether you want it or not, it's a good investment here in the neighborhood. <laughs> okay. They get of remembrance. Go ahead. Remembrance is a trait without which this world cannot endure. All of the dealings of the world are dependent upon remembrance. For a man would not believe in his friend or lend him anything if he did not remember. Okay. The simple explanation of remembrance is to remember things. What's so great about it? The same that we have remembrance, we have forgetfulness. Is forgetfulness good or bad? What did I teach you to study, to say? It depends. Depends. If God created something, it's good. Even evil inclination is good. You forgot something if it's not important for you. Okay. Another thing, if women will always forget or remember, they will never want to get a baby a second time. That's what the rabbi teaches us. One time, after going through so much suffering, and they remember the pain like it happened an hour ago or a minute ago, they will never want to get married, to, be, um, to bring children to the world. Mm-hmm. After one is enough. And that's, by the way, many of them saying during the pregnancy, oh, it's the last time, it's the last time. With all the heartburn, especially in the delivery room, they go berserk. I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> what happened a few hours later? They're holding the baby. <laughs> and they come. And it takes a year later, and they, Baruch Hashem, they forget the suffering. <laughs> they get a love to the baby, and they want more babies. So forgetfulness could be a good thing. All right? Now we'll focus on remembrance, to remember things. The things it's good to remember, there's things that are very bad to remember. Okay, so... Remembrance is something, it's vital. Without it, you will forget your siblings, your wife, business transactions. Sometimes it can make us so upset that we forget things, right? What was the name? What was the name? Where where, where did I put this? Where did I put that? You're so upset. You know, the brain is a muscle. The more you study the stronger it gets. You see great rabbis at age 90s and up, they still clear, have a clear mind. They're studying Torah, people go to consult with them. Because the Torah, but studying Torah is really strengthening the brain. And they're sharp, like they are 30, 40 years old. What's the trick? If you want a muscle to be strong, you have to make it work. You have to make it work. Brain has to work all the time. If it doesn't work, it starts to die. Never stop to think. Always learn. Always learn. Always, always, always. It's called building muscle memory. Building muscle memory? Okay. It's a good. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. The same applies to all of the world's affairs such as business, for instance. If people forgot what they had said, they could not do business and they could not make any conditions if they did not remember. Hmm. It is not necessary to expound on this, for it is common knowledge. Therefore, one should adopt this trait in all his affairs, for remembrance is offense to the truth. He must remember his vows, which must be fulfilled. Uh Vows. You know what vows are? Vows is not only... Limited to, I promise I will give so and so to Israel, to the synagogue, to that person. 
No. It's just making promises, any promises. Um, people do that mistake all the time. On the phone, um, I'll call you back. Just saying I'll call you back, it's a promise. Without even saying it's prom I'm promising. Watch what comes out of your mouth. I will try to call you. If I remember, I'll call you later. To be careful with what you're saying and what you are uh, promising, even without saying, I promise. Promising is a very strong word. The Torah has a special verse for it. Lo yachel nidro. If someone verbally said something, you have to stand behind his words and fulfill them. As it says, Lo yachel devar, don't make your words mundane. People just like to talk all the time and they, know, they don't know that their words create realities. And, and these words are standing against them till they fulfill what they said, what they promised. I tell you even more than that. Some people don't, don't even say they want to do something or they want to give something. Just by thinking, they're already giving. He didn't promise anybody to give him, I don't know, donation. But since he thought about it, he says, you know what, if it came to my mind, and in my mind I said, I'll give him, they give him. That much, just to be on the safe side. And these kind of people, whatever comes all out of their mouth, it's so important, it's so strong, that Hashem is helping them to fulfill their wishes and blessings. Because they are careful with what they're saying, and they really care about what they're saying. Okay? So, you remember, or you don't remember, giving donation. Vows, as we mentioned now. People giving donation in the synagogue from anything, and then they forget. And they rely on the gabai, or the rabbi, or someone else that will send them a note. No. First and foremost, it's your responsibility to remember. You promise to give, it's your responsibility. You can blame it on someone else. It's not their thing. The shul, the synagogue, is doing you a favor that taking notes. Of course, we're trying to do the best we can. Sometimes, you know, it's Shabbat and holiday, we can't take notes. You should remember what you promise. And give it right away, as soon as you can. Many don't start, don't go to the next Shabbat before they paying out what they promise. So they start the new Shabbat clean of any, and clear of any debts. That's what Hashem said. I know some people that has checkbooks in the shul. They keep it and they give check right after Shabbat. Shabbat is out, five minutes, ten minutes later, they're giving the donation. Right? If it's a large donation, obviously you can work out payment, for example. If you give $5,000, no one expecting you. If you don't have it in your account, right away. It should not prevent you from giving large donation because you can give it right away. There's always a way. Because at the end of the day, we want to fulfill our vows. And you know, vows only or not, it's not only a monetary uh, issue. Vows is, is promise you give to your wife. Vows, and, and it's something a wife gives to her husband. Giving her promises that he will do so and so to support, to help. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you. To support, to help. You did it in the ketubah, mm -hmm. under the chuppah, on your wedding day. You made so many promises to do so and so. And now what happened? Are you really doing that? Are you really following what you promised under the chuppah? Just uh, for you... Food for thought. Okay, let's call it that way. Just read this line again. He must remember his vows which must be fulfilled. If he has agreed on something with his friend, he must remember the matter as it was agreed upon and not change his word. Not change his word. It happens all the time. You give your word to someone, you know you do so and so, I'll pay you. 
Even if you didn't do such a great job, you have to stand behind your words. Unless you said, I'll make efforts to give you if you do a good job. It's different. You do so and so, I'll pay you. In his mind, he did it. And if you cry out to Hashem, Hashem will come cheshbon with you. Hashem will take it against you. He said a million times, don't make promises that you can't fulfill. Always, I don't like to say this word, but be yeah. vague, be vague. Meaning, make a general, I don't know, promise. I say, you know, I can, I'll try to give you so-and-so for doing so-and-so. That way you don't make promise. Because if you made a promise and you're being specific and you didn't pay, Hashem will take it against you. Okay? If you're supposed to pay someone after a one-day work, you have to pay right away before sundown. If it's at the end of the week, at the end of the week. Make arrangement to pay them. Unless agreed differently. So, this is part of remembrance. Remember. To remember what you said. So it's always better not to say something that will put you on the spot later. I've never regret over things I've never said. Remember that. I've never regret over things I've never said. Don't say, so you won't have to regret. Even talking on the phone can cause you uh, being subject for thievery, for stealing. Stealing? Give an example that I mentioned before. You're talking with a friend, and then you get another call. So one of those people says, uh, g- give me a second, uh, uh, hold on, hold on one second. Boom, they put him on hold and they talk with the other guy. And he's a waiting. A minute or two. And this guy is waiting for you. First of all, it's not fair. You got to ask the first guy, do you mind? Or better say, can I call you later? Don't say, I will call you later. You might not, you might forget. Can I call you later? Because right now he's waiting. He could say, no, 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 and now he's waiting. You are stealing his time. Do you mind if I call you later? I have an important call. Or whatever, something like that. I'll try to call you later. Don't make any problems. And let me call you in a minute. You're not going to call him in a minute. Minute is 60 seconds, right? Are you really going to call him in a minute? So why did you say a minute? You can say Blinder. Blinder is good. I make no promise. I'll try to call you back. It's very important, very easy. I'll try. I'll call. You. Give, give me five minutes. This guy is waiting for you. Five minutes. Yeah. Today I was calling a rabbi in the community for something that someone asked me. And this guy texted me back. The, the other guy couldn't reach him, so he asked me to reach him for him. So I texted him and I said, Rabbi. He didn't call, you know, he says, I'm in a meeting. So I, and then he wrote me, uh, I'm finishing like in 15 minutes or so. He didn't say he will call me, but less than 15 minutes he called me. It's a rabbi that everybody knows, very nice rabbi. And I was thinking about it today. He said, you see, he's been, he's been very careful. He wrote on the text 15 minutes. And less than this, within 15 minutes, he called me. He's being very responsible. This is a God-fearing person. And I, 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 I try never make a commitment and write numbers, 15, 10 minutes, because they're not going to put me in the spot. And I might forget. I'm just human being, flesh and blood. What can I do? So it's very important to remember all that. If you want Hashem to remember you, if you want Hashem to remember what He promised for you, remember, of course you remember, but remember and fulfill, you got to do it toward your fellow friend, wife, children, whatever, whoever. Be very careful and make no promises. Even if you have 100% confidence that you can fulfill that. It happens to me many times that I say yes and it didn't happen. It didn't happen because Hashem has different plans. I'll see you in my house in uh, 20 minutes. And I got stuck. 
for 30 minutes, 15 minutes away from home. I'll try to reach you, I'll start to, see, to meet you within 20 minutes. Different than making promises, I'll meet you in 20 minutes. Because you know, it's only 10 minutes away from home. What could happen? Uh, flat tire? Bad traffic? That you have no way out? It could be a car accident, God forbid. Okay? So we have to be very careful. Let's finish this part today. If his friend has told him a secret and asked him not to reveal it, he must remember this and not reveal it. Uh, if... Because he trusts you. The worst, you know, what's the secret of a secret? You know how you can keep a secret? I have a tip that the Torah teaches you. You know when a secret is called and considered a secret? Any ideas? But you don't tell it to anyone. <laughs> the moment you share, it's not a secret anymore. <clears throat> Period. When someone else knows, that's it. You're in his hand now. There's people come and tell you, we see it all the time, you know, between you and I, don't tell anyone. And he goes, tell his secret to everyone and says, don't tell anyone. Mm -hmm. He tell everybody and ask him not to tell anyone. It happens all the time. These kind of people, you have to be careful telling them things. Because they will tell and tell someone else not to tell. Especially in close communities or small communities. Almost everybody knows everything in seconds or minutes or days. Forget it. You, know? you want to have a secret? Keep it to yourself. This is a secret. It says... Nichnas yain, if wine comes in, yatsa sod, a secret will come out. Drinking wine, open person mind and mouth, and you start to pour um, secrets and reveal information. By the way, the numerical value of wine, yain, and sod is the same. Seventy. Wine comes in, alcohol is in, secret is out. You want to keep secrets? Stay away from alcohol. Especially with friends, because you might say things that you'll regret later. <coughs> Not to say, to do things that you'll regret later. So, if someone asks you, not to say something, not to reveal. It's our responsibility to keep his secret with us. He's trusting us. You ask for Moshe many times not to embarrass. You won't be embarrassed in front of other people. Hashem can reveal your secret many times, but he keep your secret with you. You know when Hashem and Shammai in heaven, they reveal that you get embarrassed? It says, Kol If someone commit a sin in a hidden place, he said, I'm going to do it. Nobody will see. Nifra'in mimeno begeloi. He will be embarrassed in public. In Shammai, in heaven, they roll it in a way that you're trying to hide, you'll be revealed. They give you all the chances to repent. You don't do it. One day you'll get caught. You will pay for all what you did before. Who are you trying to trick, Hashem? He can expose you after the first time. By not doing it doesn't mean that it's, 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 it's forgiven and it's forgotten. It's not. The only way you can wipe out this kind of sin is with teshuvah, with repentance. You repent, it's cleared. It's the only way. It's a white out. So, someone asks you to keep a secret, keep a secret. Especially, not to say to a relatives, wife can push you. If you don't do it, women have power. You can't even imagine. How do we know that? Someone lost his life in the Bible because of that. Remember Shimshon Samson? He was asked to keep secret. The, 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 the power he has. 
eventually Delilah, you know the song, oh Delilah, who sings it? Tim John. So this Delilah, she pushed him to reveal to her how this guy is so powerful, how he can kill so many people, he's so fast and he's so strong. Do you, do you, by the way, can you describe me Samson, how he looks like? How so do you think Samson looks like? Anybody? With long hair. Long hair, size, body size. Yeah, very big. Very big. Very yes. big. It's a big mistake. <laughs> it was very skinny, short, and he was crippled in both legs. No muscles at all. But uh, he, otherwise, where is the where, where is the miracle? But he had long hair, right? He had long hair. It, it was it was limping. It was limping in both legs. The only power he got is from Shemaim. People will see such a guy, won't believe it could be, he can, he can, he can lift, lift a stick. When you get power from Hashem, you don't need muscles. Or go to LA Fitness to you know, <laughs> lift weight every day. No. Otherwise, where's the, where's the miracle? Yeah. No martial arts, no jiu-jitsu, <laughs> no karate, no, ju- no boxing, nothing! No boxing. He would take a, a donkey chick, whatever he found on the floor, and beat people, hit people. <laughs> That's a blessing from Hashem. He was a skinny guy. That's true. That's easy way. So everybody were amazed. Where he gets his power? So Delilah tried to get out of him. He didn't. Eventually, she was able to. After he tricked her three times, a few times. How she did it? She used a very woman way to do it. It's not the right time to reveal that. Let me go to the text and commentary and you will see that in which way, as a woman, she did it. And it was, he couldn't help it and he revealed and from that point, he lost the power to the degree that he lost his eyesight. He took his eyes, eyes out of him because, you know, revealing a secret that we're supposed to keep Hashem is strict even with the righteous people. He was the judge of those days. The whole world was afraid of him. They were afraid to mess with the Jewish people. But Hashem is very strict in his Torah. I said, yes, yes, no is no. There's no gray area. We're not supposed to reveal. You're real. I don't care if you are the closest person to me. You should be an example. The demands and the requirement from these kind of people is even higher. You keep your mouth Sure. No, you'll pay for it. There's consequences. There's consequences for your actions. Very simple. It's not a story about Simpson. It's a story about each and every one of us. There is no mitzvah to talk. You know that? There is no mitzvah to talk. Unless it's a Torah learning, unless it's a blessing, unless something positive to say. Other than that, keep your mouth shut. Every person born with certain amount of words, when the words finished ends, he either will die or become mute. That's it. After you finish the amount of words that Hashem gave you, He take you, or you leave because Hashem has some plans for you, but you won't be able to. Talk. You won't talk. Either in a coma or you leave, and you won't be able. It happens all the time. So. Calculate in your mind before you say something. Especially no curses and so forth. It's not our topic, but it's all under the category of remembrance. Remember who you are. Remember who are you. And you remember who is above you. And what are the expectations from each and every. Don't take example from this guy and the other guy. Remember what we learned? They have a different test. Remember we learned that? It's a different test. Don't look at their test. You have a different mission, and each person here have a different task in this world. Don't compare your life to anyone else. Just do what is expected from you. Remember Hashem. Remember the mitzvah. Remember to do good things. Remember your promises. Keep your mouth closed unless it's necessary for you to speak. Any questions? On behalf of Ohev Israel Foundation, I want to uh, wish all of us 
a good month, Amen. a month of redemption, Amen. a month of success, Amen. a month of healing, refuah shalema. Amen. And Hashem hears our words right now. It's a time that we all fulfill the mitzvah. It's a time that you can ask from Hashem directly right now, even if you're mine, for what you need. To bring Him close to you, to be protected by you, to get your parnasah, your livelihood from Him. Because it's, if it's come from Hashem, it's unlimited. The hands of Hashem is not limited. Always ask parnasah from Hashem. God bless you all. On behalf of Ohev Israel Foundation, please go to our website and support more Torah learning and help other people. Thank you, everyone. See you, Bezrat Hashem, next week, same place. Same time with more strength and joy. Amen. 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 Amen.